Hello Serendipity students, Miss Carla here and this week the students in the ladybug class are learning about bees and ants and so I thought it would be fun to um, read this book and everybody can learn a little bit about bees because I think bees are super important and after listening to this book I think you're going to agree it is called What if there were no bees, a book about the grassland ecosystem. It's written by Suzanne Slade and it's illustrated by Carol Schwartz. And if you listened to any of my books last week, I read a book called What If There Were No Sea Otters? And it told what would happen in the oceans if there were no sea otters. And so now you're going to find out what will happen in the grasslands and around the world if there were no bees. Don't be fooled by a bee's size. It's tiny compared to the foxes, skunks, and owls that share its grassland home. But bees do the work of giants. Bees spend countless hours darting from flower to flower to collect pollen and nectar. Grassland plants, animals, and insects are tied to one another by food chains. Bees, as well as other living things, belong to several chains. Many food chains are connected by one plant or animal to create larger food webs. Did you know people are part of food chains too? We are at the top of many different food chains. So you can look at this picture and see how everything is kind of interconnected, interconnected to the bee. The bee pollinates flowers, makes honey, the berries, the honey. Um, you can see how everything comes down to the bee. Lots of different animals on this couple of pages here. Flowers are a bee's best friend. They're often filled with a sweet liquid called nectar. Bees sip nectar to keep, the, keep up their energy. Honeybees also use nectar to make honey. As bees collect nectar, tiny pieces of pollen stick to their furry legs. When bees visit other flowers, the pollen falls off. Flowering plants need pollen to create seeds and fruits. This process is called pollination. Bees usually stay within two miles of their hive. If they can't find enough nectar, some bees will travel up to seven miles from home. And you can see all of these bees here pollinating the flowers, and collecting nectar. As bees fly around to collect food, they face many dangers. Spiders, birds, toads, and other hungry predators hunt these hardworking insects. Pollution and some of the pesticides farmers use to protect their crops can also hurt bees. Since 2006, more and more honeybee colonies are dying unexpectedly. Worried beekeepers aren't sure why so many colonies are disappearing. Some people believe bee diseases, pesticides, poor eating, and stress are harming bee health. You can see... There is the box there where the hive lives. Mice often make unwelcome nests in honeybee boxes. While the mice aren't dangerous to the bees, they do damage the boxes and the bees' honeycomb. The smell of mouse droppings may cause bees to leave their hive for good. Yeah, they don't want to be there when the mice come in. Do you see the mice down here? What would happen if bees became extinct? If there were no bees, farmers near grasslands would have a lot of trouble growing crops. Farmers need bees, especially honeybees, to help pollinate their fruit and nut trees. Apple, cherry, plum, and avocado trees would produce less fruit, or none at all, without bees. Almond and macadamia trees would produce less too. Sometimes a plant or animal species is so important that without it, many other species could become extinct. 
It's called a keystone species. Bees are a keystone species. Keystone species help make sure an ecosystem has many types of life in it. And you can see here, if you remember when we read the book about the otters, they would black out the otters to show that they were gone and then you would see what happens. So now they've blacked out the bee here and now we're going to see what happens when there are no more bees. Fields of strawberry plants wouldn't be able to produce fruit. Neither would blueberry plants. Without bees, there would be fewer carrots, onions, and other vegetables. Bees are major pollinators of many fruit and vegetable crops. Honeybees pollinate about 90 different crops in North America. They help create about one third of the food we eat. Some farmers hire beekeepers to bring hives of bees to pollinate their fields. The bees stay a few weeks, then they are moved to another field. So look what happens here. The mice are coming to look for some strawberries to eat, but are there any strawberries left on the strawberry plant? You can see the strawberries are gone. Now the mice won't have any food. Grassland wildflowers and other plants couldn't make seeds without bees. Flowering bushes in nearby forests couldn't grow berries for birds. Soon many mice, squirrels, and other small animals would not have enough food to survive. With fewer small animals, larger animals would be in trouble too. Foxes, owls, and other meat eaters would have a tougher time finding food. You can see... Now the little mice are gone, some flowers are gone too, because there are no bees to pollinate them. And now you can see the fox is looking for some food but can't find any. Birds. Honeybees make honey from the nectar they collect. Bears, skunks, mice, and ants love the sweet honey. It's an important food source for them. Without honey, these animals and many others would suffer. About one-fifth of a black bear's diet comes from honey, plus the fruits, nuts, and berries pollinated by bees. Without bees, black bears would be forced to move to new areas in search of food. Oh, and we don't want that to happen. Yeah, we love bears. You can see... Other animals are blacked out now because there's no food provided by the bees. Without bees, grasslands and nearby farms and forests would become quieter, less colorful places. No flowering plants blanketing the wide open fields. Fewer truckloads of fresh fruits and vegetables. No bright berries or crunchy seeds for the forest animals to eat. See here now, it's all gone. What would happen if bees became extinct? All kinds of things. The loss of one small creature, even as small as the bee, can have a huge effect on the ecosystems of our world. Today, scientists are studying bees closely to learn how to keep them safe and healthy. Farmers are finding new ways to control pests. All this hard work should mean more bees buzzing around in the future. Bees live on every continent in the world except for one. Can you guess which one? Take a moment and think. It's a really cold continent. It's Antarctica. And they live in all kinds of ecosystems, including desert, tundra, and forest. This book focuses on bees in the grassland ecosystem. And you can see the yellow part in the map. Oh, here's a, the last picture here with the bees buzzing around. But on this map, the yellow on this map of the world shows where bees live. I hope you enjoyed this book about bees, and I hope that you have a very nice day. Miss you all. Bye-bye.